Hi, I'm Matt Olin. And I'm Tom Brandau, and we're members of the 2013 Fargo Film Festival Committee. Welcome to the 2013 Fargo Film Festival Preview Show. Here's an inside look at this year's festival. This year's 13th annual Fargo Film Festival will take place Tuesday through Saturday, March 5th through the 9th. This year we had 216 entries from dozens of different states and 13 foreign countries. The Fargo Film Festival is committed to showcasing high quality independent films and giving opportunities to filmmakers to show their work in the state of the art historic Fargo Theater as well as the fantastic intimate second screen next door to the main theater called Fargo Theater Off-Broadway. Films will be shown in seven categories, narrative feature, narrative short, documentary feature, documentary short, experimental, animation, and student. The festival also contains informational seminars, including for the first time this year, a technology seminar showcasing state-of-the-art movie making equipment in addition to networking opportunities and provocative lunch panel discussions featuring filmmakers, film academics, and people in the film industry. More than anything, the festival is about movies. Movies that entertain and inform, movies that provoke thought and spark discussion. The venues for this year's festival are the beautiful and historic Fargo Theater, which is our main venue, and our second venue will be the popular and intimate second screen Fargo Theater Off-Broadway, located right next to the original Fargo Theater in downtown Fargo. For the festival's first 12 years, former Fargo Theater Executive Director Margie Bailey and current Executive Director Emily Beck along with members of the various film festival juring and judging committees, have been committed to expanding the audience for the festival. The festival opens Tuesday night, March 5th, with also a special kickoff press conference earlier that day where Best in Show winners will be announced. There will be panel discussions on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at noon at 222 and Wano's, located in downtown Fargo on Broadway. On Saturday night around 10 or 11 p.m. after all screenings are done, the gathering place for a post-party featuring beverages will be at Mezzaluna in downtown Fargo, next to the Fargo Theater. On Thursday night, March 7th, once again at All-Star Bowl in Moorhead, it will be the second annual Bunny Lebowski Pro-Am Invitational, featuring bowling and good times. Before the night screenings each day, there are pre-parties at various downtown locations starting at 5 p.m. These locations will be Monty's on Tuesday night, to be determined on Wednesday, John Alexander's on Thursday, Mezzaluna on Friday, and the Hotel Donaldson on Saturday night. Well, this is going to be a great festival, Tom, and yes. 13th annual, and you've been involved since you since you moved here and began yeah. um, uh, about nine years now teaching at MSUM and yeah. film studies, and I've been on since the first year. Yeah, 13 years, and uh, I think 
this year's quality. We say this every year, <laughs> but I think something called Without a Box really helped yes. our quality explain what that is Absolutely. and the quality of the films we got. Yeah, this is the first year that we've been using Without a Box, and Without a Box is an online submission uh, system that is used by, quite frankly, most filmmakers that are on the festival circuit these days. Um, and it's really an easy system to work with. You know, you put all the information as a filmmaker concerning your film online and uh, festivals who take part in Without a Box, they just literally pull all the information from the internet, from that site, and all you really have to do most of the time is send in you know, a DVD or something, but everything else is already covered. So, And we have added to the quality of the submissions just because we're using Without a Box this year. And what we found, Tom, was we had so many films in like narrative short and oh, yeah. documentary feature and narrative feature, we had to have pre-screening committees yeah. to look at this stuff ahead of time to sort of weed out the bad ones because not all films make it. We have, nope. were committed to high quality. Yep. So really, there was more work this year for the committee members. Yes, there was, but you know, I think all of the committee members understood that and I think they were more than happy to do it because they realized that with that work also brought the reward of having better quality films. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, it's a, we had a bumper crop this year. And Tom, you served on Narrative Short, and yeah. just, just an example of the bumper crop, two films yeah. that were nominated for the uh, Short Subject Oscar. Yes, um, one of those films was Death of a Shadow, which is this amazing film. It's a, a Dutch filmmaker, and um, it's a sci-fi theme. It's beautiful, uh, the cinematography is beautiful, um, the, the uh, special effects in it are just fabulous, and it's got a great story as well. Mm -hmm. And then of course the other is Bukashi Boys, and Bukashi Boys comes to us, comes to us from Afghanistan. It was shot in Afghanistan. Uh, it was shot in a war zone in mm -hmm. Afghanistan, which is one of the amazing things about the film. And the performances in that film, two, there are two small boys that are the main characters, and they're, ph they're phenomenal. I mean, they're fabulous. So a very strong category in narrative short this year. And we hope one of those wins the Oscar. We sure uh, do. But if they don't, it's, as they say, just an honor to be nominated. It is. And you can see them March 5th through the 9th. Absolutely. Uh, we've got also, um, I think the, the Bunny Lebowski bowling oh, idea that Greg Carlson came yes. up with last year was a great, that allowed us to pay for without a box. Yes. And we're going to have that again, bowling on Thursday night. Yep. What a lot of fun that is. That's a great, it's a great event and um, it is, it's a, it's a great idea, you know, and especially considering the fact that this is Fargo and, you know, we've got that connection with the Coen brothers and of course the Big Lebowski and that's where the impetus for doing that came from. Um, and I think that you know last year was a very successful uh, successful event. I think this year it's going to be even more so. It's just a great time for the guests to, to go yeah. bowl and have some good times. Yeah, it is. I want to mention some special guests. The director of Informant is coming. Mm -hmm. That's the documentary feature winner. We're going to show a clip from that in about a minute here. Yeah. All the people from The Last Push are coming. That's yep. the narrative feature winner. Fabulous uh, feature. The, the star of the film, Carrie Payton, the director, Eric Hayden. Mm -hmm. So those are kind of your, your Cadillac categories, oh, narrative yeah. feature, documentary feature, and they're going to be here. You can meet these people. Yep. Serena Vincent is coming. She's a working mm -hmm. actress in Los Angeles. Her cousin Cousin Quinn Haug is from Fargo. Mm -hmm. He's on our committee and he kind of engineered her coming. Mm -hmm. uh, she's been in Cabin Fever and some other films so people can meet her. And Brass Teapot will right. have its U.S. premiere. Uh, Jeff Schlossman from Fargo is local the producer. Connection. Right, and Absolutely. they were here last year with High Road. Yes. Kirk Ruse, who has yep. local connections, yep. kind of works for that company. Uh, and Stephen Park will be here. He's an actor mm -hmm. from that film. Juno mm -hmm. Temple is the star of the film. She's not mm -hmm. coming, but this film was already at Toronto. Toronto, so which is again, a huge festival. That'll fill the theater, won't it, this absolutely, film? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, let's move to our first category, documentary feature, yeah. Informant. We've yeah. both seen this film. Amazing Jamie film. Meltzer's the director. He's yeah. coming. Tell folks about the film. Well, it's a, a really interesting film. Basically deals with... Um, a guy uh, who's the main character of the film who, um, quite frankly, was a, a, a sort of an underground activist. Hero, right. Yeah, an underground activist and was known so, so throughout this his activity in, in uh, other people who are associated with those types of activities and whatnot. Um, he took part in some things that uh, were happening down in um, New Orleans. Katrina, right. Katrina, you know, to protest right. and organize and whatnot. And then something happens. Yep. And, um, Dare I say it? Should I should I tell them? Go ahead. I yeah. mean, he basically turns informant on the title of the film. People like that. His his fellow activists and works with the FBI as an undercover informant, 
and it's a really interesting film. The way it's structured, um, you you really don't know, quite no. frankly, who to root no, for. You don't. Uh, you don't know who the bad guys are, who the good guys are, and I think that's one of the things that makes the film so intriguing. It's an objective piece. It is. Is very, he hero or is he scape or is he or is he turncoat? It you depends on decide. which side you're on. Yeah. You know, and um, and the consequences are dire. Oh yes, yes so, they are. It's a really fascinating documentary. So let's take a look at a clip now from the documentary feature winner, Informant. The idea of Molotov cocktails came from Brandon, and it was, go look on the website. Here's the website that I know about. Brad, what do you think about this? Brad thinks it's a good idea. David, what do you think about this? I think we can do this. Do you think you can do this? Yeah, we can do it. What do we do? Well, you know, you get the supplies. We'll be implementing. This is a tactic. Call me when you're done. Well, he really got into detail there, didn't he? Yeah. That was a complete lie that David said so that he could get off for his crime. The way that, that he rationalized it and also Brad rationalizes that the government was also lying. They're trying to say that they were domestic terrorists, that they had intent to use them, that they were planning to kill people. And in the face of those giant lies that made them look like monsters, this was a minor lie. Informant is a tremendous film. I invite people to watch that. Let's move to narrative feature, Tom. Yeah. The Last Push, another kind of science fiction-y uh, thing. We yeah. have the cast and the director coming. Yep. And tell folks Eric, about The Last Push. Mm -hmm. um, the Last Push, again, there seems to be uh, a theme uh, this year. We got, we got a lot of sci-fi um, in both you know, narrative short and narrative feature. And this is a beautiful sci-fi film. Uh, basically, it deals with two astronauts who are on their way, a mission um, to Jupiter, or past Jupiter. And um, something happens, and one of the astronauts is basically isolated. And that's what's really fascinating about this film to me, is the fact that the acting job that, you know. It's uh, all him. It's yeah. all. Carrie Payton. Carrie Payton, it's amazing. He's basically in a box. I mean, he's in a capsule. And he is the film at that point and he pulls it off beautifully. It's like James it, Franco in 127 hours. Very much. It's all on him. It's right. all on him. Yeah. Um, and it's it it. But it's a beautifully done film. It's a beautifully shot film. And even though you're basically with him in a box for most of the film, the way they shot it, you it never gets stale. It never gets boring. Mm -hmm. um, they did a beautiful job. You know, the director did a fabulous job yeah. just with the shot selection and whatnot. The lighting is wonderful, and the story is engrossing. So. Um, it's absolutely one of the films to look for at this year's festival. And another narrative feature I want people to see is called Dimensions, A Line, A Loop, A Tangle of Thread, British yeah. film about yeah. time travel, yep. nominated for a bunch of Best in Show awards. You know it. Uh, there again. And time travel. So once again, we have this sci-fi theme going. Uh, this is a beautiful film, beautifully yeah. uh, photographed. So I think that at this point we should probably go ahead and take a look at the uh, narrative feature winner, The Last Push. You've got a post-Venus engine burn that needs to happen. Otherwise, you're going to spend the rest of your life as Venus's only real moon. Unfortunately, from my end, I am looking at an electrical system that is completely fried, and, uh, and it, it needs to be rebuilt from the ground up. So you're going to have to perform that engine burn manually, which obviously it wasn't the way things were meant to be. The system's primary generator is unstable at best, and you have got to keep the power running. You lose power, and you will freeze to death in a matter of hours. Be very careful. Michael, what we have here is a classic old school Christmas light situation. Remember at Christmas when you were trying to get your Christmas tree lights to work? And they weren't inexplicably. And so you had to go through every single bulb and test it to get proper connection in order for the lights to light up. Well, that's what you're going to have to do alone with a 25 gajillion dollar spaceship. Okay, so that was a clip from The Last Push. And um, you know, another really strong category this year. Narrat uh, really feature. strong. Yeah, narrative, narrative short. short. Yeah. Narrative short was extremely strong, and I think that we owe a lot to you know the chair of that committee, Lisa Feynman. Um, she just went out and she solicited, and she found these films. Um, and so, like for instance, the uh, a couple of the films that, that were really standouts were Death of a Shadow, um, which 
is the winner. Is the winner, Death of a Shadow, a brilliant film, uh, beautifully photographed, and again, um, has kind of a, a, a time travel theme going to it. I don't want to give too much away. No. Uh, World but, War I type of thing. Oh, yep. gosh, but the effects in this yeah. film, it, just the way it was photographed, and quite frankly, not just photographed, but the way that the photography was then manipulated in post-production, it's stunning. It really is. Um, and of course, it's a, as we mentioned Oscar earlier, nominee. Oscar yep. nominee. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the other film uh, is, you know, Double or Nothing. And, uh, I, you know, Double or Nothing, I think you wanted to speak to that. Yeah. You really like that film. I really like this film. It's another official selection, and Buscashi Boys is our other Oscar nominee. Yes. I invite people to see that as well. But yes. uh, Double or Nothing, we're going to see a clip from that. You'll see Adam Brody, uh, another actor who's on Chicago Fire. It's about a 10 minute short about a guy who encounters a homeless man. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of funny, kind of edgy. Very edgy. Very well acted. And who wrote the screenplay? Neil Laboot, who uh, yep. did In the Company of Men yep. years ago with Aaron Eckhart. His humor really has a biting, it's, it's not politically correct. No, it's but it, not. But it's very, very funny. So let's go ahead and take a look at the narrative short winner, Death of a Shadow. And uh, then we'll also take a look at Double or Nothing. Fantastisch, meneer Rijks. Natuurlijk nog wel het werk van een beginneling, die Kassovitsch, maar toch wel een sterke compositie, een prachtige hè, combinatie tussen angst en lijden, tussen passie en vorm. Ja, wat een energie ook. Hè. Het doet mij echt spijt dat ik u binnenkort moet missen, meneer Rijks. Maar uh, u kunt nog altijd blijven. Nee. Maar waarom zo vasthouden aan het leven, meneer Rijks? Het beetje geluk tegenover al dat lijden, die pijn. Ik, ik kan u de ware schoonheid van de dood laten zien. All right, this is more like it. We got a little privacy. Hart. Then, like I said, pick the hand it's in. The money's yours. However, you get it wrong, I get to punch you one time anywhere I want. Oh no, no, hold, hold. Stop it, Clark. Just stop it. Just, I'm not doing anything, okay? I'm suggesting to bet. If anything happens, it's because this guy goes for it. If you got the guts, go ahead. What's gonna be, Denzel? You up for this or not? Stop calling him that. How do I know that's not his name? They like names like that. What? What is it? Tashawn? Julius? Magic, maybe. Clark, now you're just being. It's Clark, just like you. So we invite people to check out all the narrative shorts, and it's not just those that you just saw. There's a no. lot of great narrative shorts. Wonderful. And there's some great student films, Tom, this Absolutely. time. I was on the student committee, and phenomenal. Of course, uh, um, your students submitted a lot of films yeah. to at Minnesota State Moorhead, but uh, the University of Southern California really, yeah. had, they got a lot of toys they out there. They kicked butt. <laughs> they did. They, you know. They had a lot of films entered. And, you know, they have a lot of toys out there. Yeah. They can use studio, SAG actors. Yep. And I know that does make a difference, doesn't it, Tom? It certainly does make a difference. And, um, but, you know, I'll say, uh, as an instructor at MSU in the film studies uh, program, I think it's awesome that our students are entering and competing head-to-head with these films because you know they're going to have to go out in the, in the real world of filmmaking and compete head to head with those guys they anyway. Yeah. So, but there's some amazing films that came out of USC. Um, you know, there's a, a, a the winner uh, this year. Suyako. Su Suyako. Yeah. Haunting. It is. Film. Shot in Japan. Shot in yeah. Japan. Beautifully photographed. The art direction is impeccable because it takes place over several decades. So they have to sort of jump. It starts in um, the, the late mm -hmm. 50s, I 50s, believe yeah. it is, in the 50s. Yeah. And it goes all the way up to present day. Another good film is Offline, which is yes. our honorable mention winner. We're gonna see a clip from that. Fantastic Fun. film about what happens when the internet goes down and just chaos ensues all over the world. It's really Student hilarious. Student film, but it looks like a professionally made film. Wonderful film. A lot of good films. So yeah. let's take a look at a clip from Suyaku and Offline.
者いなかったら、クズ、当然。いや、覚えとき。With breaking news and Oma One. If you have tried checking your email within the last couple of minutes, you might have noticed that your mail server is offline. There seems to be a high level of reports around the globe that all online activities have vanished. Even my teleprompter is not working. We are currently unsure of the magnitude of the problem. However, what we know for certain is that many local servers have ceased to find a connection. Though the internet security company has not released any official statements regarding the issue. A lot of great student films. We invite you to take in as many of those as you can at the festival. Let's yeah. move on to animation, which has been a very strong category the last three, four years, thanks to Greg Carlson and Absolutely. some other people. Carrie Arnson took over as jury chair this year, and again, Did we've a got job. a terrific winning film. Yes, absolutely. Junkyard. Um, it is, how should I describe Junkyard? It's pretty edgy. It is. And it's pretty dark. Yep. Uh, but the animation is absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Um, and, you know, even the, the performances, and I can say that, you know, the performances, the voice performances mm -hmm. from the actors, mm -hmm. very, very engaging. Um, it's, uh, it, it, and the, the way it begins, actually, is just fascinating because it begins on uh, a subway train. And there's a, a, a certain flicker effect that uh, the director used as a transition. It's a transition from the present to the past, back to the present. And it works really well. So, uh, beautiful film, beautiful yeah. film. Let's take a look at a clip from the animation winner, Junkyard. All right, so that was a clip from the animation winner, Junkyard, which is a really edgy film, but it's beautifully made. And uh, there are some other animated films as well that are just fabulous. Um, now, another category, which can be, as we say often, a tricky category, is experimental. Mm -hmm. um, and I really thought that this was a strong year, it not was. perhaps the strongest year right. that we've ever had for uh, experimental, but very strong. And the winner, in my opinion, was Green Lady. Green yeah. Lady. Loved it. Very strong piece, really <laughs> thought-provoking, and in some ways haunting. And I think it's accessible to mainstream audiences too, Tom. It is. Yeah. It is. Um, it's a film that the, um, the, if I can say this, being an experimental film, the narrative through line of this mm -hmm. film is actually a voiceover, the same young woman that is talking about uh, the death of her mother and how that death came about. So let's take a look at a, a quick film clip from the experimental winner, Green Lady. There was a woman in the bed that was next to her who had died the night before when I visited her. This poor woman had died like kind of choking for air, like with a really bad asthma attack sort of thing. She was screaming, crying out and the nurses couldn't fix her in time, and she died. My grandmother said, you know, that's how I'm going to go, taken away in a black bin liner like she was. And our final category is documentary short. The winning film is Walk Tall from England. We yeah. don't have a clip of this because we're still waiting for what we call the hard copy version yeah. to screen at the festival, but wonderful film about a former oh. Olympic athlete who really is into posture. Yes and how to stay in shape, and he looks phenomenal for his age. Yes, he does. And, um, you know, one of the interesting storylines uh, in this film is the fact that, yes, uh, as a younger man, he was an, uh, an Olympic athlete, and he was pretty poor, so he could not afford to, um, you know, go to a training facility. He could not afford to buy training equipment. He made his own piecemeal, just whatever he had on hand. And um, it really shows you what you can do when you put your mind to it. But he's such a positive guy, mm -hmm. and it's such a positive feeling, you know, film that yep. uh, I think audiences are going to love it. 
And then finally, before we're done, let's mention the two-minute movie contest. Yes. Friday night, March 8th, 9.30 p.m. at the Big Theater. Greg yeah. Carlson, our friend, has really done a good job over the years with this yeah. very fun contest. Absolutely. And this is always a big draw at this festival, uh, the two-minute festival. The two-minute film contest, you know, it, it, it draws a lot of local filmmakers, um, a lot of student filmmakers. And, uh, I mean, the beauty of it is, is it's so accessible. It you is. know, anybody I mean, can get into this. Anybody yep. can get into this. Um, you know, sometimes I was going to say it doesn't usually take all that much time to make a two minute film. But that's not true because you it could does. spend a lot of time making a two minute film. You know, just because it's two minutes long doesn't mean that the production time is shorter, mm -hmm. you know. So and there's usually some amazing films that are that come out of that competition. So, yeah. so again, that, that'll be Saturday, Friday night, March 8th, 9.30 p.m., two-minute movie contest yeah. at the main theater. Well, that concludes the 2013 Fargo Film Festival preview show. Remember to check the website for ticketing and festival pass information at FargoFilmFestival.com or FargoTheater.org, or you can call the festival at 701-239-8385. We'll see you at the festival March 5th through the 9th. And remember, why go to Cannes when you can go to Fargo? We'll see you at the festival. So long. Bye.